Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at how to put ticks and crosses in your spreadsheet. And there are lots of different ways of doing it. The first, well, the first ways, first five ways are quite kind of manual. And then the last four ways are you know, based on things like conditional formatting and formulas. So they're a bit more automated. So we just go through these different methods. Pasted symbol. So this is like an obvious thing, really, but you can copy and paste symbols into Excel sales. So where do you get your ticks and crosses from to paste into sales on the internet, basically? Now, I'm not going to go to the website that I got these ticks and crosses from, but they're easy to come across. But the idea would be that you'd copy it. I've just pasted it into Word. Click into a cell, Control V to paste it and it'll go in quite nicely. And then whenever you need that tick, you just copy it again, copy it again, and then paste it. Now that'll work if you've kind of got the scenario where there's just a few rows and you just want a few ticks. That's quite a good way of doing things. Now you can actually get the tick and the cross symbols from within Excel. Um, if we go up to the insert tab on our ribbon, across there to the right symbol symbol you have to be on the wingdings font well there are a few other fonts that have ticks and crosses but i'm going to go for wingdings and if you just scroll through here you'll eventually find the ticks and crosses alternatively you can type in one of these character codes 251 to 254 so if i type 251 in you can see i've got my cross there then my tick which is 252 my tick in a box, which is 253, and my, sorry, my cross in a box, and then a tick in a box, which is 254, okay? So if I want to tick, I just click on it, and I go to insert, close, click outside, and I get a nice tick in the uh, cell. Now, you do need to make sure that the cell has the wingdings font applied to it, otherwise it won't work. It's probably not wingdings by default, but you can see this is Calibri. And if I insert a symbol, let's put a cross in. So let's go for 251, insert, close. It's red because I applied some formatting to it before, but it does automatically apply the wingdings font to the cell. Obviously, if you want it to be black, you just go up there, black or red. Okay, so that's one way of doing things. Insert symbol or paste symbols. Uh, keyboard shortcut. Now, for this to work, you need to format your cells with the Wingdings 2 font. Wingdings 2. Okay, so do that first of all and then you can do a capital p so shift p and you get a tick and shift o and you get a cross i'm getting a red cross again because previously i formatted these cells red i got to take that off before i started recording but i quite like my crosses in red so you can do that because it's just normal normal uh text characters really so you can apply any of these formats to it and obviously you can increase the size as well if you want to now autocorrect now for this, you'll see what I've done. I'm gonna, if I type cross in and then press enter, I get a cross. If I type tick in and press enter, not ticks or something completely different, tick, I get a tick. So how did I achieve that? Well, what you do is you copy, so the tick, so it's on your keyboard, and then you go to file options uh, proofing and you go into autocorrect options and then what you do is you put your tick into uh, the with box and then I'll put tick two because I've already used tick down here but it can be any replace value that will automatically be replaced with the tick so if I click on add click on OK click on OK there so if I try tick two, press enter, it gives me a tick. And you do the same with the cross, you just copy it, 
put it on your clipboard, options, proofing, autocorrect options, replace. I've already got cross. So if I do cross two, place with a cross, paste it in there, uh, add, click on OK, click on OK. So if I type cross two in, then I get a cross. So the only danger with this is if you did ever want to write tick into a cell, you get a tick. So choose a replace with value that you think you're never going to use. Well, that's quite neat. Next one's a little bit different using checkboxes. To do this, you need the developer tab on your ribbon. And to get that, if it doesn't automatically show, just right click on an existing tab, customize the ribbon, tick developer here. So then on the developer tab, you go in the controls group to the insert menu. In the for, under form controls, you click on the little checkbox tool, click somewhere into there. We don't need all that text. Doesn't seem to disappear, but then it does disappear. Uh, you right, you um, right click on it to move it, and then you can sort of move it in there. And then if I fill that down, I get ticks in all. I didn't do that very well, did I? What I need to do is kind of move that a bit more into the center of the cell and probably reduce the size of this kind of border around it so it's actually within the cell. Anyway, you get the idea. So if I now fill it down, is it going to work better for me? Almost. You can fiddle around with that to your heart's content. But here I can just tick or untick the boxes. I can't get across this, but that's quite nice and interactive, I think. You can just tick or untick. Okay. So those are like the very manual ways of getting ticks and crosses. Let's look at some functions. So we've got the char function. So you may remember that when we inserted symbols, we used these numbers 251. So character 251, I get this strange symbol. That's because I need to format all of these cells. If I'm going to use this method, I need the Wingdings font applied. So that gives me the cross. And if I go equals now, I'm getting strange symbols now because I've got the Wingdings font applied. So equals is this, looks like a floppy disk. So I have to look up in the formula bar to see what I'm typing. Character 252 gives me a tick equals character 253 gives me the tick in a box equals character 254 gives me a tick in a box there we are and you can format those with different colors and things like that okay but let's kind of incorporate uh, the 251 and the 25 two into an if statement so what we're going to do is we're going to say automatically give me a, a tick if the unit sold has met the target otherwise give me a cross so we'll have to do it up here so if the unit sold is greater than or equal to my target which i need to fix or therefore then give me character 252, the tick. Otherwise, give me character 251, which is the cross. I'll get rid of this formatting in a minute. Let's go for black. And there we are. We've got our crosses and our ticks according to that logic. Now, uni character function is slightly different, and I think it's superior, but you may not have it in your version of Excel. If I say uni character 1004, I think actually it might be that it is. So I'll change this up here. I was wondering what was going on there. But it's actually three zeros. I get a tick. And if I do uni character, you've guessed it, I get a cross. So the 10008 is a cross on the 10004 is a tick. But the great thing about this is, is it's not dependent on which font you're using. 
doesn't matter what font you're using, it's still going to show the tick of the cross. So again, I could incorporate that in an if statement. I could say if this is greater than or equal to this, then give me the tick. Otherwise, give me the cross. So if I was you, I'd be using unicar, however you say it, this function anyway, rather than this function, because it's not dependent on which font you have applied to the cells. Okay, now, number formatting. So what we're going to do is do a little calculation in here. We're going to say units sold minus the target, which I'm going to fix. And that's going to give me a number, some of which are positive and some of which are negative. Now, what I'm going to do is convert the positive numbers to a tick and the negative numbers to a cross, and the crosses are going to be red. Now, to do that, I'm going to go into Format Cell. So I've got the cell selected, Control-1 on my keyboard, Custom. And if you've not used these custom formats before, this is how it works. Ah, now what I need, I'm going to have to go back into here in a minute, but what I need is a tick and then a semicolon and then a cross. Now the semicolon is the divider between the positive format, which is to the left of it, and the negative format, which is to the right of it. Now what I forgot to do was copy that tick symbol. So I'm going to take this tick symbol and copy it, Control C. And then I'm going to go back into number formatting. So control one, custom. And I'm going to paste in that tick. Then I'm going to say semicolon. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment because I need to paste in the cross. Click on OK. You can see I've got the ticks now. I'm just, I'm just comparing these columns and I've realized there's something wrong with this. You may have noticed it, but uh, this should have been fixed. I was looking at these bottom values here. I'm sure some of you recognize I've done that wrong as I was doing it. But these ones down here should be crosses. And the reason I noticed that is because there was nothing here where we had negative figures. Because at the moment, we haven't actually defined a format for negative results. So that helped me spot that error. Apologies for that. So anyway, what I'm going to do is go back to my cross, copy that. And do the same thing. So... Select the sales control one, and then I paste in my cross. Okay, click on OK, and I get ticks of crosses. Now, if I want the crosses to be red, back to control one. And what I do is after that semicolon, in square brackets, I write red with a capital R. In square brackets, and I get the red. Now, what happens if this is 2,500, I still get a tick, so that's fine. Uh, that works fine. So it works fine even if the unit solds are exact because it's still seen as a positive number. Okay, so number formatting is a nice little option there. Right, last, last example is with conditional formatting. And this is probably the funkiest method. Um, what I'm going to do is basically link this these cells here with these cells here. So with conditional formatting, you need some sort of value in the cell to apply the conditional formatting to. So I'll just copy that down. So these, these cells are linked to these cells. So if these change, these will change automatically. Then I'm going to go up to conditional formatting, icon sets, and more rules. The icon style I want is the tick, the exclamation mark, and the cross, which I've got there. And I'm going to change the type of rules I'm going to set up as formula. And what I want to do is say that I want to tick when the value is greater than or equal to the target, which I have there. 
then I want a cross when it's less than the previous formula, so less than 2,500. And I've got to put something in here, so I might as well just put a zero because none of the sales values are negative. And then this one is not needed. Okay, so if I click on OK, then you can see I get the ticks and the crosses. I also get the actual unit sold values, but I can take those out. If I go back to conditional formatting, manage rules, edit the rule, all I need to do is tick show icon only. And then it gets rid of those uh, actual values behind it. The values were needed, so I could apply this conditional formatting. You can see whatever method I use here, I'm getting, well, with these last ones anyway, I'm getting the same results, but it's just different ways to get there. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Uh, please subscribe if you have, and I'll see you next video.